college football players collectively bargaining with the Big Ten. Now, this started out initially, it looked like they were going to unionize. There were all these different reports out and blah, 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 blah. Sean Clifford, the Penn State quarterback, was apparently the leader in the clubhouse for Jason Stahl and the guys over at the College Football Players Association. Uh, However, first day of Big Ten Media Days, and Jason Stahl, who is the leader of that CFBPA, documents in a newsletter how his potential unionization effort at Penn State within the Big Ten was disrupted by a campaign to turn Sean Clifford against the CFBPA. Now, let's initially talk about the idea that Josh Pate had on Late Kick, and it's the first thing that I thought about when this unionization effort and the revenue sharing with the conference, et cetera, came about. Because the players, they read the news, they see how much money they are bringing into these universities, they understand that football is the bell cow, right? The Big Ten Bringing in USC and UCLA was obviously a money deal, and we will talk about that here in just a little bit as far as the membership portion of that. But the players see that their school will be bringing in $100 million in athletics media rights. Now, $100 million is a lot of money, and it is double what anybody is really bringing in right now. The SEC, I think, Last year, now obviously there was the COVID money that was $77 million that the conference added to, whatever. Regardless, the highest that anybody's gotten thus far is like $54 million per year. We are now talking about two different conferences where the schools will each be bringing in over $100 million per season in athletics media rights. The schools see it. The kids see it. They all understand what they're worth. That's why the NIL market has gone bananas. So, if you look at what Josh Pate said, and let me get the numbers here, he said if you paid each player $40,000, he was looking, you know, between thirty and 40000 He said if we go on the upper end, right on the high end, $40,000 per year for 85 scholarship football players, that is $3.4 million per school. Take it up another ten grand, brother. Jump it up to 50000 That's $4.25 million per school if each school makes $100 million exactly. That is still only 4.25%. And what he did bring up with that is the idea that, yes, uh, you will be able to lock kids into contracts. So all of this talk about unlimited transfers, et cetera, and being able to play immediately eligible uh, or in, in able to... <sighs> able to have eligibility immediately, regardless of where you transfer, etc., that will all be squashed. Because if you collectively bargain with these players, then yes, you will be able to put in that contract that we own your rights, we own your playing eligibility, whatever, for two years, for three years, etc. And it would basically be the same contract for every single player that comes in. So NIL would, in effect, be exactly what it's supposed to be. You would not have these recruiting inducements, or at least not as many of them, because obviously you're still going to get quarterbacks that will end up making $8 million contracts or whatever before they ever step foot on campus. <laughs> Nico. So, in this situation, the Jason Stahl stuff is really interesting because in his document, he talked about meeting Sean Clifford, going through all this, because Sean Clifford said that he is not unionizing whatever. Like, this is not going to be a union. But he, you saw videos about his teammate, Journey Brown, and Sean talked about uh, Journey Brown's medical issues and not being able to continue his career after playing at Penn State, etc. Uh, all of this was nuts because the CFBPA, or the leader of it, flew into State College and met with all the players and was able to do it without the coaches around, etc. And he does say in this newsletter that in his final five minutes with the whole team, the element of surprise was lost when a coach discovered us, which is, it sounds shady anyway, right? 24 hours later, every administrator in the Big Ten and every coach in the Big Ten knew that I had been organizing a Penn State chapter of the CFBPA. Our campaign plan outlined in this article, which he, of course, links to, uh, had now lost the element of surprise. More importantly, the campaign to turn our star player leader against the Players Association kicked into overdrive. Commissioner of the Big Ten, Kevin Warren personally lobbied Sean, telling him that they were creating a Big Ten Reform Committee, which he talked about during the uh, during the pandemic, when they were trying to figure out if they wanted to play football or not, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, Kevin Warren 
personally lobbied Sean and wanted him to join the Big Ten Reform Committee. Uh, this guy said, such committees have a long track record of being ineffective, but Sean was swayed in this direction in the week after I left Penn State. I had inklings this was happening, but thought that what might actually be happening was Sean and I were working to bring Kevin Warren to the table to negotiate with player leaders for the CFBPA. I did not know for sure uh, which was the case until Sean posted a statement to his Twitter confirming that he was distancing himself from the CFBPA and joining the Big Ten Committee. Now, he did say in here that Sean told me that Minnesota quarterback Tanner Morgan told him he would never support the CFBPA Big Ten campaign and has clearly weighed on Sean. Uh, this is this is all insane, right? Do I believe that we are going to move towards collective bargaining? Yes, absolutely. That's why I just went through these numbers. It is not that expensive for these big-time conferences to pay players. Uh, it also puts a little bit of regulation on this where you're not going to be able to get it any other way. But do I believe that the CFBPA has been turned against, et cetera? Maybe. I mean, would it, do you think they would be in the Big Ten's best interest to uh, allow players to unionize, et cetera? Because that brings in a whole level of other issues. If the Big Ten can just work with their own players, as opposed to a group of players that are trying to, because trying to unionize the entire sport is a whole different deal. If you unionize each individual conference, well, that's one thing. But doing it for an entire sport is something else. So, of course, the CFBPA wanted to have a Big Ten chapter and an SEC chapter, etc., but it's still one gigantic union. I don't know how that would work. I don't know how any of this really would work, but you know that it's coming. Something along those lines will end up coming, and the Big Ten and the SEC will be the leaders in it. As soon as the Big Ten does something... Uh, Josh Pate said this on Late Kick. As soon as the Big Ten does something, if they do it on Monday, the SEC will do it on Tuesday. Like Kevin Warren admitted as much and said they want to be a leader on this issue. Like they they do want to do the revenue sharing, et cetera. And the reason they want to do the revenue sharing is because it can allow them to control the kids. They won't be able to transfer as easily. It, do you really think that they would give up, you know, 40 or 50 grand a year, a lot of them, just for additional playing time elsewhere? Like, then you get your development strategy back. Then you get your roster management back. You get all of these. And is it worth $4.25 million a year? A thousand percent. Yes. Like it's a hundred percent. So I'm a, I'm curious about it. I'm curious to see what the next step is going to be. But I would like for you guys to leave your thoughts in the comments. I want to know what you guys think about this, about collective bargaining, etc. It's not going to change how much I love the sport. I know that. It won't change anything about it for me. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.